I was traveling recently in the Midwest, and one of the uh, talks that I gave, people asked to have breakfast the next morning, some of the Muslim leaders. And at breakfast, this literally happened. One of the people who's a very well-known physician in the Midwest, very bright, he and I get along really well, said, you know that group in Washington, I love the work that they do, but you know, I have a little bit of a problem because the leader of that group during the Gulf War took a position that I didn't like. I said, there are an awful lot of other Muslims that wanted to see another position. He said, okay, he said, but there was one other thing. We had a conversation once and his interpretation of one of the hadith of the prophet, I had a problem with. And so I looked at him and I said, how many hadith are there? Uh, have you ever looked at hadith criticism and interpretation of hadith? It's like looking at tafsir of the Quran. There's more than one interpretation. How is any single Muslim going to please you on everything that goes on? And so part of the challenge, as you know, the challenge of Islam to Islam is the challenge to Christians. It's the challenge of recognizing diversity within the community. That the unity of Islam includes a diversity. In Islamic law, we call it ikhtilaf, the differences that exist among the madahib, among the law schools. The ability to accept diversity, the ability to tolerate diversity, not only diversity from religion to religion, but within religion is the only thing that can make the community strong. If you don't tolerate diversity, then there's no debate, there's no discussion. And then you have an experience that I've had, both within Christianity and Islam, and now I will end. This is what I call the Christian, the radical Christian and radical Muslim alternative. Years ago, I went out to lunch with a young man who was studying at a major university who was a born-again Christian. And after lunch, he said, you know, I really enjoyed this. Can we have lunch again? I said, sure. I said, if you don't mind having lunch with somebody that you know is going to hell. And he looked at me. And I said, well, you do believe I'm going to hell, don't you? He said, yeah, but I, I, I didn't, because I'm not born again. You know? I said, and you believe your parents are going to hell. They're good Lutherans. They raised you. They're good Christians, etc. But they're not born again the way... And you love your, he said, yeah, I love my parents, but they're going to hell too unless they're born again. I said, gee, I read the New Testament, and boy, that's, that's an interesting interpretation of Christianity, okay? Second experience. I was asked to keynote a conference in a major, uh, well, I was asked to key, I, I, I decided not to name the country. I was asked to keynote, because of my friends there, I was asked to keynote a major Muslim conference, let me just say that, overseas, a major Muslim conference. And so I keynoted the conference. And after it, a very well-known young alum got up, who's a very, very interesting guy. And he got up and he praised me. To, he said, the speech was wonderful. But watch what was happening. The speech was wonderful. And Professor Esposito, what can we say about you? I mean, you spent 20 or 30 years explaining Islam. You've written these books. Just, just wonderful. I kept thinking, I wish my mother were here. I wish my, and then the punchline came. He said, and, and we love it, despite the fact that you're a kufa and we know you're going to go to hell. <laughs> We hope you will continue to do this for us. And the audience, half of them laughed and the other half looked very nervous. And he was speaking, he knew his audience and he was deliberately driving it home to a conservative wing. And he kept going on and he said, and he said, come on now, we have to be honest with Professor Esposito. We like him, we'll invite him back again, but we've got to tell him what we exactly think. Well, I will end by saying this, it's not just a question of Muslim to Christian. The danger that I see at times is that those who call for Islamization, some have created a process that I call Catharization. In their enthusiasm to talk about more Islam, if any Muslim disagrees with them, they're Kufa, it, you know, they're Kafirs. That stifles the kind of free discussion and dissent. And so you have the irony. Those who would complain that they cannot discuss their religion in many Muslim countries without certain regimes coming down on them, when they're in an open society are ready to silence other Muslims who don't speak the way they want to hear them speak. And it seems to me that the challenge in terms of Muslim-Christian understanding in the 21st century is that both Christians and Muslims have to allow for the kind of open discussion and diversity, but the communities have to do it. And what does that mean? It just doesn't mean pluralism and tolerance. It means tolerance as respect. Not tolerance as I tolerate you. Because tolerance as I tolerate you can mean Tolerance as I have absolutely no respect for you, but I won't kill you. I mean, you know, I'll just allow you to. It means tolerance as respect. That is the challenge, it seems to me. That is the foundation stone for where we need to go. We have to realize that we are a community that believe in the same God and that we are a community that has an obligation 
because it is that God, for example, in the Quran that said, I could have created you as one nation, but I chose to create you as many. It is that God that talks about people of the book. And that should be the theological basis for the kind of vision and for the kind of movement that I think we're all challenged to engage in in the 21st century. Thank you. Uh, Professor Esposito agreed to answer maybe half an hour questions. Yeah, more. we'll do maybe a half hour or less. Or less. Uh, I know some of you have your favorite television shows. I don't so want to get into So we have two microphones. If you just uh, walk in with a couple of conditions. No lectures and be as short as possible. Notice everybody sat down when you said the first one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and before you start, I'm going to use my prerogative and ask you the first questions. 